Servants are in the dark. They don't know what their master's up to. Jesus says in John 15, 50, I don't call you servants any longer. I can't call you servants. You're not in the dark anymore. See, the light's been turned on. Jesus shows up. The Bible says Jesus walked into dark places and light sprung up. It's as if everywhere he set his foot, light, light and revelation appeared. So that you could never be in the dark again as long as Jesus was near. When Jesus said that he was the light of the world, he transferred that to you. He said, lo, you're the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. That's the church of Jesus Christ. Church of Jesus, a light to the world, just like Jesus, set on a hill that cannot be hid. So everywhere Jesus goes, no one's in the dark any longer. And so you can't be a servant because a servant doesn't know what the master's doing. Servants are a little more than children because they don't know what's going on. But a friend is intimate. I wish I had this information a long time ago, this one little piece right here. God just wants to be with you. He just wants to spend time with you. He doesn't want to check up at the end of the day, make sure you evangelized people, witnessed enough, gave money in the offering. He doesn't want to make sure you attended church Sunday. The reality is, is that he just wants to spend time with you. He's paid a great price for you. Such an awesome responsibility was laid on his shoulders to remove that responsibility from your shoulders. He's not asking you to change. He's asking you to get to know him. We've made Christianity about change. All we do is bring people in so they can change. We'll, we'll, we put it on our sign. Come to church where you'll be challenged to be changed. Come be changed to be more like Him. The reality is, is what we're doing is sending a message to people that there's something wrong the way you are and that we re if you could clean it up, you'd be better acceptable to God. No, the reality is you'd be better acceptable to people. You'd be better acceptable... And the way you acted, and the way you dressed, and the way you talked, and the way you lived to the people around you that get offended by it, yeah, yeah. where God knows everything that's going on and says, "Won't you just come to me like you are?" The reality is, I came to have relationship with you. I didn't come to, I didn't come to change you. I come to love you where you are. Yeah. Don't worry about change. Change happens as you begin to have relationship with somebody. Yeah. See, my wife and I, when we got married, there, there was I, we both brought things to the table. This is what happens in a relationship. You bring you to the table. And then this amazing thing happens in, in the realm of the spirit where two become one. Now, there's still two human beings. From the outside looking in, nothing's changed. But something serious is starting to change on the inside. Something's happening because you're starting to morph into that person. How they think starts to rub off on how you think. How they talk starts to rub off on how you talk and vice versa. They actually start to think in the way you do. This is the way God designed it. Because God pulls Adam out of the dirt and then pulls a woman out of his side. And the Bible says, and now, and when Jesus gets here, he says, two become one. In the spirit realm, God takes him and puts him back into the same body. That's why two become one. So what happens is, is as relationship grows, we start to transform into the other partner. So as we get in relationship with Jesus, what happens is we start to transform into the partner. We start to think of the world the way He thinks of the world. We start to love the way He loves. We start to respond the way He responds. We start to deal with adversity the way He deals with adversity. We start to take on to us the qualities of who He is, not because we're trying to be like Him, but because we have a relationship with Him and we're starting to change from the inside out and it doesn't happen quickly. And we try to rush it in the church because we get offended that people don't change quickly enough. They come in and accept Jesus. They're not changed next week. They just got married. They're not even off their honeymoon yet. They don't know what their partner's like. They're barely intimate. You can't ask them to start to think like their spouse. They've known him for seven days. Uh, as, the, as they spend time with us, that's why I started a night going, you're not a disciple of Paul. You're not a disciple of James. You're not a disciple of John. You're not a disciple of your church. And you're not a disciple of your pastor. You're a disciple of Jesus. Yes. Stare at him. Yes. Watch him work. Listen to his voice. Pay attention to how he moves. Pay attention to how he loves people. Pay attention to how he forgives people. And pay attention to the parts of him you don't like. Because that's going to happen in your relationships too. Because your spouse has parts you don't like. And it's not always because they need to change. Sometimes you need to change. 
And it's why you don't like it, because when you look into the mirror of who they are, you see a part of you that you wish was different, but it's a lot easier to yell at them. There's going to be some stuff about Jesus you don't like. When Jesus says when they hit you on the cheek, give them the other one, that don't fly. I ain't met too many guys yet that like that response by Jesus. And don't church it up. It means exactly what he said it did. Amen. No alternate translation. Go see what the NIV has. What's the Greek got on it? I don't know. The reality is a guy hits you in the face, you got another cheek. That was Jesus' point. Man asks you to carry a load a mile. When you get to the end of the mile, carry it too. Don't ask, just do. Well, I don't know if I like that Jesus. Fine. That's who your spouse is. And there's a transforming that's happening inside as you begin to move into the intimacy of who He is. Don't freak out if you don't like it. That's okay. He still loves you. He still loves you. You're not divorcing you. You're in this thing, man. Welcome to the family. There ain't no getting out. You can stop showing up at the reunion, but you still belong. I'm not going to their meetings anymore. That's fine. You still have our DNA. Ain't nothing you can do about it. It's going to haunt you and chase you everywhere you go. And the difference is the Holy Spirit lives in your house. So the Holy Spirit goes, you won't go to mine, but I'll come to yours. I'm glad. I love wherever you are, I am. Get this influ Holy Spirit influencer out of your head. This idea of the Holy Spirit who sort of stands outside of you and waits on you to get to church. This influences how you act. You know, the reality is wherever you go, he goes. I mean, wherever you go, he goes. Not so he can go in there and thump you on the skull, but because if you're going to walk into the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to walk into the valley of the shadow of death. I'm going to put a table there in front of your enemies. You and I are going to look your enemies in the eye. I'm going to carry a rod and a staff in there because wolves are out to get you. And once in a while, I'll tap you with the rod because that's what I do to sheep. I don't break their leg. I don't beat them to death. But once in a while, I have to tap them a little bit and go, hey, straighten up. You're better than this. Is that grace preaching? Yeah, that's grace preaching. I mean, that's grace at its finest is when you realize you got a shepherd who loves you enough to walk into hell with you. Because you're not his servant. Yeah. Right. yeah. You're his friend. Thank you, Jesus. You're not his slave. You just let the servant go. That servant can do what he wants. I'm just giving him a paycheck. He goes spend it however he wants to. My friend's different. They're intimate. I care about them. There's something special. 